I want to challenge you. The Lord is actually doing, he's not stopped doing that since the day of Pentecost. He has constantly been taking us down this road. Hey, hey, you need to make some adjustment to that thing. You need to think differently about that. Hey, that is not what I had in mind. And allowing the Holy Spirit to work in you. Allowing the Holy Spirit to be engaged in your life and to confront you. I've shared this before, but if if you're offended, you should thank the Lord. You should thank the Lord for offending you. Why? Because sometimes that's the only way to get you to change. Sometimes we're so steeped in our tradition, we're so steeped in our rituals, our, our ruts, we're so steeped in this is working. And the only way to shake the system is to shock it. It's the only way. So when you've been offended, it's an indication, a couple indications. One is you were stuck. And secondly, the grace of God wants to unstuck you. I just made up a word. Yes, I did. Fully aware of that. And do not look it up, because I doubt it's even in the dictionary. So when, you're, when the Lord offends you, when he pokes you, you should be saying, thank you. How do I change? And some of us are wrestling against the fence. I don't want to go there. I don't want to think about it. I don't even want to look at it. No, 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 that's not an option. The Holy Spirit will keep pushing on that until you finally say, thank you. What do I do about it? Are you guys with me tonight? So it's important. You know, every stream thinks you're a river. It's amazing. Every stream like, man, we're this raging river. Until you get around someone else like, wow, their river's bigger than mine. God, could every stream think they're a river? So it's important that we are actually learning from our brothers and sisters in other streams. Why? Because they carry something that we do not have. They saw an aspect of God that we do not have. And so it's important that we aren't just, now I'm not saying ditch the stream. No, I'm not saying that at all. It's funny how critical we are of other streams when it doesn't look like your stream. Do you understand? It's a different stream. That, that's the whole point. What I find fascinating, the fivefold ministry, I'm rambling now, so just bear with me. The fivefold ministry, do you know that Jesus inherited all five? Jesus was all five. It wasn't like he was an evangelist and that was it. No, he was all five. Man, he just, he was seamless in that. Man, he was an apostle one moment, prophet the next, evangelist. I mean, the guy was just killing it. And then when he ascends to the Father, he goes, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to split this thing up. I'm going to split up the fivefold so not one person can have all five. I'm going to split it up, and if you read the actual passage around the fivefold, apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist, when you read that passage in Scripture, there's two main reasons for it, to equip the saint for the work of the ministry and to reveal Jesus. But you can't reveal Jesus with just one. You reveal a part of him. So the idea of the church at large walking in the fivefold, and as we walk together in that, guess what happened? Jesus is revealed. So the idea of reaching into other streams, and if you get a bot, like, I can't believe they do it that way. Don't look at that thing. Look at the thing that makes sense to you, at least. Well, they don't worship long enough, or they don't, they don't teach about signs and wonders and miracles. When you have that attitude approach, it's very arrogant, it's very superior. I'm like, I, I wish they would talk about signs and wonders, but I'm not going to let that bother me. Why? Because they've got a message on evangelism that we need. Or they've got an insight on communion that we need to have. In the Pentecostal charismatic stream, we're all about breakthrough. We're all like, man, just hit the wall. Just keep hitting until it finally breaks. That's how we are. <laughs> how many know what I'm talking about? That's how Pentecostals and charismatic live. Man, just get the sledgehammer out. Just keep at it. <laughs> and we've got the verse. Ask and knock and seek and don't stop. All right, just keep going. And that's how we are wired. If you're into Pentecostal charismatic stream, that is so how we are. And if you're not doing that, people are like, well, get out of the way. You're not even supposed to be here. <laughs> then you go to another stream and they're like, why do you guys just pound for years on the same thing? Like, what are you talking about? It's in the Bible. <laughs> but how many know there's more to the Bible than just hitting a sledgehammer on a wall? This is very important. Why? Because it's what we do. And it's scriptural. But other streams in the body of Christ are much more reflective. They're much more reflective on things. They, they don't, they're not persistent in certain things. And we're like, they don't even know how to do this. And we just come back to our wall and we just keep banging it. 
And we don't realize that we are missing something that's very biblical, very scriptural, and it's a revelation of who Jesus is. So this is really important that you and I learn to reach into other streams and say, okay, what's that one thing? Okay, oh man, I'm going to take that one thing and pull it into my life and walk it out. This is crucial. Instead of finding what's wrong or what's not, you don't connect with, find some common ground. Start there. Just, and you'll find out, oh, that's why they do what they do. I didn't know that. But when you begin to think you're, the, you're a river, then you become very myopic. You become very focused on what you're doing. And you miss out on a revelation of Jesus Christ that is in other streams. What's fascinating about all streams and rivers, they end up in an ocean. At some point, it ends up in the big water. It ends up in that big, big water. 